NTA International. I am Ifoma Ojinta. But first, the highlights. Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration. Nigerians pay glowing tributes to the military's fallen and living heroes. President Buhari urges Zamfara governor not to relent in restoring peace and security in the states. <music> INEC presents certificate of return to Senator Hope Uzodima as governor elect of Imo State. <music> and now the news in details. The Armed Forces Remembrance is celebrated on the 15th of January every year in Nigeria. The day is set aside to honor members of the military who fought gallantly for the country and are still fighting in various theaters of conflict within Nigeria and across the world. As usual, officials of the Nigerian army and political leaders as well as the legionaries converge on different centers across the nation to celebrate the day with parade in Abuja. President Muhammad Buhari led the nation to pay glowing tribute to fallen and serving members of the Nigerian armed forces. The president at the National Memorial Arcade in Abuja led the wreath bringing to an end two months of activities marking the 2020 Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration. State House correspondent GD Onifade reports. President Muhammadu Buhari kick-started activities marking the Armed Forces Remembrance Day way back in 2019 with the launch of the Remembrance Day emblem. The president is being received into the National Memorial Arcade by Vice President Yemi Oshimbacho, Senate Leader Abdullahi Yahaya representing the Senate President, Speaker House of Representatives Femi Bajabi Amila, Chief Justice of Nigeria Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed, and the Service Chiefs, as well as other dignitaries for the final event to end the 2020 Armed Forces Remembrance Day. It's a solemn moment indeed as all heads drooped and arms dropped as a minute silence has been observed in honor of the fallen soldiers who paid the supreme prize defending their country and humanity in various conflicts nationally and internationally. O oh God, grant eternal rest to their soul. Nay, they live, finding their sustenance in the presence of their Lord. They rejoice in the bounty provided by God. President Muhammad Buhari and all in position of authority under him. Give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as they lead this nation to greater heights. The president thereafter leads other dignitaries in the wreath laying ceremony. of the wreath laying ceremony is the release of pigeons by the president. This symbolizes the need for peaceful and harmonious coexistence among all Nigerians and people around the world. From the National Memorial Arcade in Abuja, Jide Onifade, and the News. And to a soldier returning from the front line, the Armed Forces Remembrance Day is a day of sober reflection 
And to the families of the nation's fallen heroes, it is a day with messages of hope and encouragement. But what does this day mean to Nigeria and why is it marked annually? Olusheye Adiagbo takes the story from here. The work of a soldier is an assignment that comes with a huge prize and to those who signed in. It is with a readiness to pay the ultimate prize, even at the cost of their lives. We are here to sacrifice our today for their tomorrow. We are here to sacrifice today so that our children will have a peaceful life tomorrow. I believe everything is planned by God. So when it comes, I take it. Hey, I wanna be a soldier. With full determination, a soldier is always on alert to defend the territory and protect the lives of the people. Olawale Bakari from Southwest Nigeria is here with his friends and this is despite their tribe and religious differences. For Olawale and Idris Galba from the Northeast, the men and women of the Nigerian Armed Forces are heroes and heroines who deserve this day that has been set aside in their honor as well as recognition for service sacrifices, especially for those who failed to return from the front lines. It's not easy for someone who just left his life because of me and you, for us to live. There was to be celebrated. I'm from the area of the battle, and they deserve to be commended because they do a lot. If not because of them, we don't know where we're heading to. But how significant is this day? Kabu Damo is a security expert. The 15th of January is coming at, at a time when a lot of attention is being paid to the counterinsurgency operations in the Northeast. So it's quite remarkable and it's a good day for us to take uh, a moment to uh, re-appreciate and to give gratitude to the number of, um, of military personnel that have paid both the supreme sacrifice as well as those ones that are currently uh, implementing several operations to protect the li lives and property of Nigerians. For Major General Galba Ayodeji Wahab, the Nigerian army is where he spends the most productive part of his life and he tells me how life was before his retirement. Nigerian army is my life. Uh, what it means to be in the army. Come around, join, travel to so many places, meet different interesting people, at times kill them or they enjoy in Abuja, Ulushaye Adiagbo, NCA News. Meanwhile, as the government continues to develop programs for the welfare of the family members of the Nigerian fallen heroes, an appeal has gone to Nigerians to rally around the government to ensure that the sacrifices of the fallen heroes are not in vain. Donyi Dia takes it up from there. May 31st, 2017 is a day fate Amakwe will not forget in a hurry. A mother of three woke up to the sad news of the death of her husband, a tale which she wished would never come true. On Sunday morning like this, I was preparing to go to service. Then the news came. Her husband, Warrant Officer Rumi Amakwe, while embarking on a peacekeeping mission in faraway Sudan, promised to reunite with his loved ones when he returns. But that was a dream which never came to pass. It just remind me again concerning my husband. I was shedding tears even as I was sitting down there as they were going to honor the uh, lost soldiers. Well, I say may oh, glory be to God because he's in the hands of God. Faith Amakwe's story is similar to thousands of other family members whose breadwinners pay the supreme price for peace. My husband died 2002 in Joss. He slept and never woke up. And the next day I was at the mortuary praying. I held him if he can rise again. But ultimately he never woke up again. But I felt his body cold and I look at him. The memory just came to me that all about life, this is the end. I heard him and I have this push to go on in life. 
Many of such men and personnel of the Nigerian Armed Forces laid their lives in the defense of the nation's integrity. One question, however, which has continued to surface is what becomes of those the left behind. Right now, as I'm talking now, my last born, I cannot even pay his school fees. But this concern has not gone unattended to, as the government is committed to adequate compensation and support for relatives of the fallen heroes. Giving them a job, supporting them educationally and otherwise, it will be of a great help. For, for the past, uh, I think almost three years, we've been coming here, and our program uh, is an initiative of the present of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We are saddled with the responsibility of um, a kind of public-private partnership for empowering ex-servicemen, widows, children of the fallen heroes. And so, as the 2020 Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration come to a climax, there is a message that these gallant officers and men are leaving behind patriotism to fatherland that which the fallen heroes exemplified doing dear and as the nation commemorates 50 years of the end of the nation's tragic civil war the country remembers the victims of the conflict and honors those on both sides that lost their lives a statement by the senior special assistant to the president, media and publicity, Garba Shehu said their tragedy shall neither be forgotten nor repeated. The statement said the war served as a potent warning on the dangers of aggressive regionalism, ethnic baiting and political corruption, adding that the nation must forge common memory that can serve as a bridge to a future free from the ravages of sectarianism. It said the nation remembers the past and how to draw its lessons on how to move forward together and live in peace, saying that it is unfortunate there are some who fail to recognize these and instead repeat the mistakes of the past, preaching inflammatory rhetoric meant only to divide and called on all leaders and par parties to moderate their language. The statement said there were no victors in this war. Yet, in rejecting division and embracing unity, Nigerians should ensure those lives lost were not in vain. Now, joining us in the studio to talk more on the Armed Forces Remembrance Day and 50 years of civil war in Nigeria is a war veteran, Charles Chikezie, who has served in various capacity at home and abroad and retired as a Director of Information, Federal Ministry of Information, so you are welcome to NTA News International. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Chikeze, how best do you think the nation's fallen and seven heroes should be remembered? I think they deserve a tribute every day and every moment of our lives as a nation. These are men who left the comfort of their homes, who took a vocation of defense of their nation, who face odds day in, day out, at all times, to ensure the safety of the lives and properties of their compatriots. They okay. should be honored and everything should be done to assuage the pains of their families. Okay, now, um, you witnessed the Civil War as a child soldier. What was the experience like? The war, the last unfortunate war started when I was um, 13 years, I was 13 when the Civil War started in 1967. I was in secondary school. Um, I experienced various phases of it. The phase, the phase of hunger and fear, the phase of illness, the phase of insecurity, and the phase of being even conscripted as a little boy to join the Biafran army. OK. Now, what are the lessons the nation should learn from the past, you know, both the wartime pre- and post-civilian war periods? Uh, first of all, a situation of war is undesirable and it is unnecessary. It is wicked. Mm -hmm. So the nation should build on attributes, scenarios that foster our patriotism as Nigerians, not situations that will um, radicalize people, not a situation that will make people doubt their belonging to a country. The war was painful. We saw relations that died, several in my family 
and in my mother's family, uncountable numbers. Okay. There was starvation, there was hunger, there was sickness. But the war is over, and we're in a phase of love and peace. So the lesson for us is to continue to move forward as a nation, love ourselves, trust ourselves, support ourselves, and build a great and united country. Okay. Now, how can, how can Nigerians, you know, embrace this peace you're talking about? Embracing peace is easy. It's just for us as a people, through the leadership and through the followership, to be committed to righteousness, to be committed to fairness, to be committed to programs that will fulfill our youths. If the youths are not fulfilled, they will fall victim to any pressure group. If parents don't have the wherewithal to sustain their families, they'll be vulnerable to uh, contrary ideas, negative ideas. The leadership must, therefore, as a matter of responsibility and trust, embark on programs that will build positivity in Nigerians, that will lift people out of uh, poverty and despondency and lead them into comfort and trust. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about the families of the fallen heroes. What do you have to say to them and how can government assist them? To the families of the fallen heroes, I say more courage. God should imbue them with more courage. I hear the story, I had the story of a young woman who just had the news that her husband who had gone on a mission didn't come back. It happens severally. So we as a nation should ensure as a deliberate policy to take care of their families, to take care of their children. One woman who spoke said even her last born, she's not even able to pay the school fees. So as a matter of policy, statute, legislation, let us find ways to know them and support them. And again, let us uh, make sure that what we hear at the sidelines is not true, that many of the troops get so shortchanged. So rather than shortchanging them, let it be that we even devote much more to their welfare. Okay, that will be all. Thank you very much, Mr. Charles Chikizie. It's an honor having you here in our studios today. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure, and I wish Nigeria very well. Thank you very much. And instilling the spirit of this year's Armed Forces Remembrance Day, the All Progressive Congress has commended the military for keeping the country safe and preserving it for future generations. The party in a statement noted that the troops are engaged on the front lines of the war against Islamic State of West Africa province, Boko Haram terrorists, murderous armed headsmen, kidnappers and other criminal elements. The APC acknowledged that a lot more needs to be done for the troops, adding that President Muhammadu Buhari has shown great determination and commitment to improve the lives of the military personnel through improved military budgets, better welfare for armed forces, personnel and the families left behind by fallen soldiers, and procurement of modern military equipment for the troops. The party urged Nigerians to continually pray and support the nation's brave troops as they continue to defend its territorial integrity. We now take a break. More news in a moment. Do stay. For staying tuned. And away from the Armed Forces Remembrance Day, President Muhammad Buhari has urged Governor Bello Muhammad of Zamfara State not to relent in his efforts at restoring peace and security in the state for a prosperous future. This was when he granted audience to the governor who was in the state house to brief him on the security situation in his states. 
I come to see him and to update him about the huge successes that are recorded by the Nigerian security in terms of uh, uh, wiping out some of the um, bandits in all the areas in Zampara State. You know the narration that used to come out from the state, but uh, uh, thank be to God that today the narration has completely changed. Before you hear banditry activities every day, killings, kidnappings, but today uh, nothing coming from Zampara as such. So we thank him for all the support that given to uh, Zampara state people. Mr. President is very happy with the action that I have been taken and uh, he pressed me very well and he said I have to keep on what I'm doing to the good people of Zampara state. State House correspondent Sadamu Sambo reports that the governor also briefed the president on his efforts at enhancing mining activities in the state. We have been talking with so many investors in Nigeria and outside the country, particularly in Russia, China and Dubai. And some of them all are coming by February. We see a lot of uh, investors that uh, will come to my state to invest. Nigeria's business-friendly environment has continued to attract more foreign partners as the Turkish Minister of Trade, Russia Pekan, led a business delegation from Turkey to Nigeria. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo received the delegation and promised government commitments to both local and foreign investors. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports. The discussion between Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju and the delegation led by Russia Pekan centered on bilateral economic relations and investment. Nigeria is the sixth largest trade partner of Turkey in Africa and the second in Sub-Saharan Africa, with the two countries having trade volume of over $2 billion in 2019. The Turkish Minister of Trade Russia Pekan comments on the visit after the meeting. We are willing to have to increase our trade and the investment uh, mutually. There are some pending agreement had been signed before or going to be signed. There are several agreements between us and we have agreed with the ministers that we are going to have more often visit each other and the business form together with our business people. We have very much pleased that the Nigerian and the Turkish business people, they are very much interested in doing more business in between and investment. Nigeria's economy is agreeably based on imports and the delegation may hope to provide quality and cost-effective products for Nigeria. However, with the Buhari administration philosophy, the new business cooperation opportunities that could be explored by the delegation would be on support for manufacturing, and this may be the message. We've been discussing on various issues. Uh, our major focus at Nigerians is uh, getting Turkish companies to come and invest in manufacturing here in Nigeria, and those are the discussions we'll be having, and uh, the responses we'll be getting are very encouraging. The delegation is expected to hold more business meetings before departing the country. In the State House, Jude Onifade, NT News. To streamline the operations of professional architects from the illegal activities of quarks and the protection of intellectual property from piracy, the Architect Registration Council of Nigeria is imploring licensed, licensed architects across the country to obtain the council's unique project number. This was pointed out at the induction ceremony of newly licensed architects in Abuja. Habiba Oladipo has the details. Today's world, architecture designs are limitless in terms of creativity and imagination, as thinking outside the box has become the new norm. From skyscrapers, smart homes and offices, the possibilities are endless. And to ensure Nigeria is not left behind, this induction ceremony of newly licensed architects provides the avenue for experienced professionals to prepare the next generation for the tax ahead. We are trying to mentor them uh, to be able to know how architects should behave, what architects should know, how they should address their clients, what they should produce. So when they go through that, then you are classified as registered and licensed architect. 
we are definitely going to do our best. The feeling is exhilarating because it's been a long journey. You know, we're uh, pursuing to be registered for so long. And today our dreams have finally come true. Under the project verification item, we have four things. One, a PC. We have the stamps. And of course, the practice masks. These were the items, the verification documents we used to have in those days. But I tell you, all these verification documents have been compromised. And that is why we have a lot of cracks in the profession. The emphasis here is, however, the need for professionals to obtain their Archon project registration number to filter quacks from the system. The Archon project number will also protect the intellectual properties of these new sets of professional architects, as well as regulate their operations as they aim to compete globally. Habiba Oladipo, NT News. And for a bit on foreign news, Russia's government has resigned as after President Vladimir Putin proposed sweeping constitutional changes that could prolong his stay in power. Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev said the president's proposals will significantly change Russia's balance of power. Mr. Putin asked Mr. Medvedev to become deputy head of the National Security Council, which is chaired by Mr. Putin. The unexpected announcement came four years before Mr. Putin's fourth term of office is due to end. Under the existing constitution, he will not be entitled to another term and the Russian leader said during his speech to both chambers of parliament that there will be a nationwide vote on changes that will shift power from the presidency to parliament. And now a quick check on Thursday's weather prospects for Nigeria and some cities of the world.